Do you want to know how to discipline a narcissistic teenager? I'm Nicolene Peck and I teach all over the world about parenting, good communication, how to build strong family bonds, and education all through the lens of the principle self-government. And in this video we're talking about narcissistic teenagers. <laughs> We're going to be talking about narcissism and the teenage years, what you can expect, and what you can do if you happen to be dealing with narcissistic behavior. All right, I hope you noticed that I said narcissistic behavior, and that's because your teen may or may not be an actual narcissist. Be very careful not to classify your teen as a narcissist, whether you're talking to their face or whether you are talking behind their back or just thinking behind their back. Try not to classify them as a narcissist just yet until you've actually had a diagnosis that they do have narcissistic personality disorder. Because a person can display narcissistic tendencies but not necessarily be a narcissist. I work with a lot of families who deal with a lot of behaviors. They are concerned about their teens pulling away, being aggressive, using strategy on them, trying to control. There are a lot of different things that teens do. And sometimes these are just part of teen development for that child and they aren't necessarily a full narcissistic personality diagnosis. So when we are talking about narcissism, what types of things are we talking about that teens might do? Do they say things about you to other people behind your back to try to get an edge in other social situations? Some people might consider that to be a narcissistic thing to do. Do they only think about themselves and not seem to care about anyone else? That does seem kind of narcissistic. In fact, that goes back to narcissist, right? Loving himself so much, thinking that he's so great. Do they seem so proud or cocky all of the time? Are they inflated in their ego? These are all things that people feel like a narcissist might do. Sometimes narcissists don't like to help out, don't feel like they should have to. They feel very entitled. And sometimes they play the victim to some people, yet the aggressor to others. Sometimes they seem to target certain people, like maybe that one parent, but to everybody else, they're so sweet and kind. Well, Teens can just do this too because they can take you for granted or feel like you're the aggressor, making life hard on them when they feel themselves being so smart, so advanced. They feel like they see things that other people don't see, that they know skills that you don't know. This helps them feel like they really are so smart. I remember as a teen feeling like that I knew more than my parents. I remember telling myself that under my breath as I was frustrated with my parents when I went to my room. I remember saying to myself, I know more than them about this. Teens think that. This is part of the thought processes that prepare them to have enough bravery to launch and pull away from their parents enough so that they can become successful adults one day. So even though it's annoying to deal with, it's not true, the things they're telling themselves, they do often experience this. So it can be normal behavior for a teen to have a big ego, be rude, and even play strategy against their parents. This doesn't mean we want it to continue, however, and this doesn't mean that you have to put up with it. We're gonna talk about what to do, but first, why don't you let me know what you're dealing with? What are some of the behaviors that are going on? Put them in the comments below. I'll try to get around to answering them as often as I can. There are a lot of videos on this channel and I get to it as quick as I can. But your comments may also help other people to know that they're not alone in what they are dealing with. So what can we do about these maybe narcissistic tendencies or behaviors that look like narcissism or even if your child really does have a diagnosis of a personality disorder including narcissism. What can you do? Well, the first thing you need to do is recognize that oftentimes the narcissist is so inflated that they forget what the roles are. 
So what is their role? What is your role? Those are very important bits of information that they need to know. Now at first they may even take that information and try to use it against you. Don't worry about that. They still need to have that basic identity within the family unit. Years ago, I wrote this book, Parenting a House United, and this is gonna be a book I'll probably reference again in a few minutes. But I thought when I wrote this book, which was a bestseller, that people understood their roles in their family relationships. And then people kept asking me questions like, well, what if they don't care? Well, what if they just don't like me? What if they never help out? What if, you know, those types of questions. And I would say, well, that's a roles issue. So I realized that I needed to write another book. So I wrote this book called Roles, The Secret to Family, Business, and Social Success. And all of the children in the family that is part of this story are in their teen years. So this will be very beneficial. This book goes into how to help your teen understand roles. There's actual conversations that these parents in this story have with their children that help the children and the parents get on the same page about who they are so that they can then start using some of the skills in this book. So one of the key roles that you do need to understand is that when you're a parent, you're a teacher, and when you are a child, you're a learner. Now there are other roles that happen at different stages of development for the children. And of course, parents have more roles than just being the teacher. But those are the main, most basic roles that you have in your family dynamic when you have children. So when you are a teacher of your child, that means you need to be able to do the teaching. If the teacher doesn't teach or the learner doesn't learn, then you have dysfunction. So you have to put those roles back in the right place. Otherwise, you will not be able to have a functioning family dynamic. Many parents who worry or think that their child is narcissistic often feel that way because the roles are so frustrated. So don't get discouraged if you're dealing with narcissism or narcissistic behaviors, what should you do instead? Use some skills that will help maintain the roles and help the child learn how to have some element of self-responsibility, self-government, instead of always blaming everything on you or trying to strategically work everything outside of themselves. So what is this channel called? This channel is called teaching self-government. So what is self-government? Self-government is when you understand the cause and effect of any situation and then you possess a knowledge of your own behaviors so that you can control them. So that means that you make a plan for yourself, you follow through, you check up on yourself, you even identify when you have done something wrong. This is not a narcissist friend. To understand when you have done something wrong, you can admit it. You want to find those moments and you want to correct them. So can you help a narcissist learn to do that? Yes, you can. But it starts by learning some very basic skills. So in the book that I mentioned before, Parenting a House United, as well as in my TSG parenting course, which is on my website, teachingselfgovernment.com, I teach what are called the four basic skills. The four basic skills of self-government are following instructions, accepting no answers and criticism, accepting consequences, and disagreeing appropriately. When a person learns these four basic skills, that ends up taking care of 99% of their behavioral problems. And I have put this to the test with some of the most difficult teens that my state could dish out. Not only did I raise four children of my own to adulthood, but for many years, my husband and I took in therapeutic treatment care children. They were all teens between the ages of 12 and 18. And many of them had behaviors that looked like narcissism or were narcissistic. So I worked with them and taught them how to govern themselves despite their tendency to be narcissistic. And I had great success, which is why people asked me to be on a BBC documentary and other parenting programs and news shows, as well as to write articles and even write books about parenting and teach about parenting. That success showed people that anything was possible if you made a plan and then followed through on that plan. So 
you might have guessed it by that description, but if you're going to teach your children self-government, then you need to learn self-government yourself. Those four basic skills are adult skills. They're not just for the children. And there are five teaching styles that parents need to know as well so that they can help their children conquer these narcissistic tendencies. Let's specifically talk about how to discipline a child who maybe has learned some of the skills and principles of self-government already, and now you are using some of your parent skills of self-government to correct a problem. So let's say that your teen knows how to follow instructions, accept no answers and criticism, accept consequences and disagree appropriately. They know the skill sets for all four of those four basic skills. They also know exactly how you'll correct them that you have a skill called an effective correction that you use every time you need to correct them, to keep you calm, to let them know you're not taking it personal and so that they don't need to take it personal either. They just need to identify what's happened and work on the behavior. No big deal. So what you would do is you would go to your child and you would start with a description. You would say, just now I gave you a no answer about playing video games because that's a thing that could happen, right? And you looked at me, rolled your eyes, and said, whatever, and then kept playing video games anyway. That is not accepting a no answer. When a person accepts a no answer, they look at the person, keep a calm face, voice, and body, say okay, or ask to disagree appropriately, and then drop the subject. You didn't do any of those things. When you choose not to accept the no answer or disagree appropriately, then you actually choose to feel grumpy and you don't get understood very well. And then we have to take this time to do a correction. So what you should have done was, you should have looked at the person, kept a calm face, voice and body, said okay, or asked to disagree appropriately, and then dropped the subject. Since you chose not to do that, you've earned an extra chore, okay? Now some parents might be saying, they're not gonna say okay, and they're not gonna accept that extra chore. Do not, doubt that they are able to learn this skill, that they can learn how to accept this consequence and they can learn how to accept no answers because your consistency will help them. You might think that an extra chore is not going to deter them. They're not going to care. Well, that's not where our structure ends. I'm not going to go down that road of what if they are completely out of instructional control? They won't follow any of your instructions. They won't accept any of your corrections. What do you do? We do have a plan for that, but this isn't the video for that. We're going to assume that they do know their skills and that they recognize I need to accept this right now and just move on. Whether they care or they don't at the beginning, they will learn to just say, okay, and accept that negative consequence. Or they might say, okay, may I disagree appropriately and use their disagree appropriately skill. And this will help them choose that they can be okay and say okay, even if they don't originally want to. Now at first their hearts might not be changed, but they can get to a place of change when they learn how to do these skills on a regular basis. Some people change from the inside out. Those people are very easy to work with. You tell them a truth, they make a change, everything is over. But there are many strong-willed people who change from the outside in, which means that they work on the behavior and then realize it actually was a good thing for them. So you can help your teen, who may seem a little narcissistic, to learn how to accept corrections and to eventually even self-correct when they recognize a problem. We could talk about so much more here. We could talk about having parent counseling sessions so that you can teach your child more about how they're coming across and help them plan their communications better. We could talk about creating a, an environment where you have meetings with them, where you check up on these types of behaviors, how to be successful in conquering not just this behavior, but many others. But I don't have time now. So go to teachingselfgovernment.com, find the book, Parenting a House United, maybe start there. Or if you want a full training for a child who seems to be more of a handful, then really the TSG parenting course is great. Or even better is the parenting mastery training. I do live parenting mastery trainings multiple times a year, sometimes online, sometimes in person. Find one of those at the store at teachingselfgovernment.com.